Up next, we're going to hear from the next NGO. We'd like to invite Yumi from PPIS. Yumi, Yumi. Okay, there you are. Hello, hi everyone, good evening. I would like to thank Elisha and Tech Ladies for, you know, for this wonderful initiative. I think the, the, the amazing crowd here is testament to, to what you do. Thank you for that. Yeah, round of applause for her. <laughs> and thank you to all the coaches. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful that we are chosen because we have Singapore Muslim Women's Association, but the coaches are all men. But as you know, when you help a lady, you help the family and you help the community. So this is what uh, we are doing. And just a bit about uh, what we do, PPIS. Um, it's actually Malay um, Persatuan Pemudi Islam Singapore, which is translated to Singapore Muslim Women's Association. So we began in 1952 when we had yeah, the, the um, women then faced a host of issues such as family, domestic violence, low education, poverty, as well as divorce, uh, which we do still face today, admittedly. Um, and so a group of 22 very passionate women came together and started this organization. They wanted to you know, champion the rights of women and their children and families, uh, create opportunities um, and you know, uplift the community, basically. 64 years on, so we, have, we are a 64-year-old organization and we have uh, recently had a strategic retreat where we revamped our mission and vision because it was just too long to remember. So now it's simpler, thankfully, inspiring women, strengthening families. So that's what we, we do. Um, we are a compassionate organization com connecting communities, so we, we want to be uh, the facilitator basically in the community to just bring people together and hopefully enhance civic engagement. Um, we have about 200 staff in total across 14 different centres. We have our head office, two family service centres um, and so on. I'll go through them shortly. Okay, so we have our early education unit where we have six centres, uh, infant care, childcare and kindergarten. And we have social services, uh, two family service centres, one divorce support specialist agency. And from there, an offshoot uh, sprang up, which is the Centre for Remarriages, because we realised that, you know, after going through a divorce, uh, what happens is the step families and, you know, um, a lot of people, a lot of step families, I mean, what we, what we saw as a problem was the integration of two different families, you know, their children, the parents. So um, the Centre for Remar Re Remarriages and Step Families came about. We have a hub for minor marriages, uh, which is, you know, um, I guess somewhat you know, similar to what you do. Um, we have two student care centres and a Family Therapy Institute. And on top of that, we have a training and consultancy services where we train other professionals, other social workers on uh, how to you know, manage these, uh, th these challenges. So, before I go on to our next slide, um, just want to pose a quick question. Apart from the staff, apart from donors, very important, apart from you know, beneficiaries, what is the most important for NGOs? Volunteers, that's right, that's right, you got it right, volunteers. And we are a 64-year-old organisation, but no one managing our volunteers. <laughs> yep, uh, and it's sad to say, but you know, it's, it's part of this wonderful uh, project. So our, our latest initiative, so I'm heading this department where we are looking at some of the new initiatives, research, advocacy, community and member engagement, because apart from these families, we realise that the bigger community is not engaged, and of course, volunteer management. And currently, our 14 centres, they have different processes, they have different policies, forms, engagement mechanisms, some through SMS, some through calls, some through emails. Uh, some just through you know personal connections, and they they have Excel copies and they have also hard copies. So when we go to the centres, we actually see like you know hard copy forms, and you know um, and most of our volunteers are engaged for ad hoc events. So you know just one day event, and 
the the what the the event is you know is finished and that's all. That's the that's the end of the engagement with the organisation. So what we want to do really is for volunteers to complement staff in providing a holistic intervention for our beneficiaries. So it's not just about um, what our staff can do in that limited time, but we want to grow it and you know provide them a, a better care basically. Um, and so the, the the department will look into standardisation. Uh, and hopefully a centralised online system which is accessible to all centres for all you know, supervisors to, to take a look at what our database of volunteers, who are they, what can they do, what their interests are and uh, link them accordingly. And what we want to have is also regular long-term programmes so we don't want just ad hoc events just for the day. Um, we already have uh, projects coming up uh, which require... Um, more tracking, that's why the need for this system. And uh, so that hence we are looking at service, projects, skills-based volunteers to <coughs> increase our effectiveness in meeting the social needs, community needs. So basically, um, yeah, like what I said, the problem is really we have a website which has volunteers at the bottom where volunteers can click on it and register. And I did that two years ago, and I was never, until today, engaged. So, um, but somehow, thankfully, um, I got connected through somebody to go in as a volunteer. So I was, have been a volunteer for two years, and I'm a staff. Uh, and, and recently, last Saturday, also, we engaged someone for a professional service, which would otherwise have cost us $6,000 for the day. And that was because, you know, I ran through the list the Excel spreadsheet of volunteers and what their their skills are. If not for you know for, not for this this volunteer management, um, basically we'll be losing out on a lot of you know resources, network skills, interests, and you know time, commitment, passion. Most importantly, so that's what we really want to do. And hopefully, with the system, um, you know, it would tackle a lot of problems that we have. We can uh, look at you know resolving some of the recruitment, engagement, tracking system, managing, communicating when our next events are, uh, appreciating because hopefully we want to be able to track them and see the number of hours they put in, uh, the commitment they, they, they show, and then we can you know, have um, kind of like a volunteer appreciation day, which currently the different centres have on their own, but we would like to have you know, one on a big scale just to, to show our appreciation to them. Um, and then in that way, we hope to retain them, share them amongst the centres and maybe perhaps into organisations. And when we see that, you know, they are really committed and they have a lot of time and expertise, they, they, they want to share with others, we can develop them, you know, send them for trainings, you know, with some government funding maybe. Um, and hopefully improve the whole the community. So that's what um, the whole aim of this you know project is. Um, so thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Yumi. So I really like all of my our NGOs, but when when a bunch of women tech ladies come and help women causes, that gets me like oh girl power. <laughs> More excited than usual. So next, we're going to hear from uh, Sherwin, who's the coach for the, this project. Sherwin? Sherwin is a bit nervous because there's a lot of people. <laughs> nice, guys. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm Sherwin Chua from uh, Chinese born in Philippines. Uh, yeah, I live somewhere there. <laughs> uh, so I've worked with several companies uh, before working on uh, Tinkerbox. Ta-da! So I work now in Tinkerbox as a senior engineer. Um, so I think this is wrong. Okay. Uh, so I'm a s- I'm going to work with uh, PPIS, which you just heard. Uh, We're going to do a volunteer management system, not an event management system, sorry. (laughs) Wrong slide. Uh, Yeah. Uh, 
so in order for us to to help them, uh, we're going to dump all the volunteer uh, volunteer data that they have right now, uh, which is around I think four hundred people. Uh, yeah, so they can sort them with this page or something. Yeah. Uh, then these volunteers can also log into their system and uh, see their login hours or something. Yeah. And they can also participate through this uh, uh, page where the event is happening. Uh, this event, this kinds of events, I think, will be sent through a uh, email system, emailing system. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> You're doing well. You're doing well. Uh, so for the for the applicants, uh, we're going to use these tools, uh, Ruby on Rails, Heroku as a server. The, the cloud server, uh, Slack as our communication, Git for, for collaborating with other developers or tech ladies, uh, and Circle CI to check our, if our tests are passing. We need tests. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, what is not. Uh, so one of the wish lists that the NGO have is a uh, rating system, but I'm not sure if we can do that for the 10 week time. But yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> I thought, yeah, thank you. So like none of us are professional speakers, so it's, it's, it's normal and some, some of us are less comfortable than the others. But I think Sharon did a great job, so give him another round of applause. Okay, so up next.